Constantin Mel. Constantin is a well-known researcher in Europe, and he has graciously consented to come to America and share more of his knowledge with us. He was here in 2007 at the Extraordinary Technology Conference and just did an incredible job in demonstrating Tesla's radio control methods and a lot more that's behind it. He's able to see what Tesla was really talking about, which is a great achievement these days because so much of his terminology has drifted in the way it's being used since he wrote his patents. Konstantin um, went to the Technical University of Munich, has a master's in electrical engineering. He has his PhD from the University of Stuttgart where his uh, main topic of study was calculation of eddy currents. He's a professor at the Old Glock School in Black Forest. He's the professor of electrical power frequencies, or power engineering, I'm sorry. He works a lot with Tesla's asynchronous motor. He's been doing this for 26 years now. He has extended Maxwell's theory, and only with this extension can we understand it properly. So let's give a warm welcome to Constantin Mail. Some others. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to present this time um, a speech which I have uh, done and have presented uh, several times to companies, in, especially in Switzerland and in Germany, um, because they need to know more about Nikola Tesla uh, if uh, we have uh, to find an answer to the question uh, what we, shall we do if we should shut off our uh, atomic power plants, you see. This is a, really a problem which is discussed. Um, well they started the discussion before the catastrophe in Japan, but after Fukushima it became even more actual. So the uh, system, the European government we're working out is called Desert Tech, the means uh, energy from the desert. Um, and my uh, presentation is uh, to Im even improve it by Tesla Tech. Okay. So I want to speak, I want to go back to the roots of Nikola Tesla to sh uh, point out what he has invented the multi phase induction system with. Uh, four or three phases, uh, phase currents. This is uh, the oldest invention, then uh, to use not three, then two cables, then one cable was the next, about one cable transmission with about no losses, and uh, at the end, the wireless system uh, using any, any uh, cable. So uh, if you have no cable, no copper, you have no copper losses, well, that's clear. This would be the best solution, uh, Tesla said. Well, and I always start this uh, presentation with parts of a film, and I hope it works. Uh, we need sound. Sound, please. Here is. Edison favored direct current, while Tesla championed alternating and three-phase current. Alternating current emerged as the winner. Although Tesla was granted more than 700 patents, and according to the US Supreme Court should be acknowledged as the father of broadcast engineering, his work is barely known today. On his 150th birthday, 
a special exhibition was opened at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. The Swiss Tesla Society invited Konstantin Mayl to make the keynote speech. He quoted an almost forgotten article from the New York Times of the 6th of February 1932. In it, Tesla described a form of radiation that came from the sun that consisted of incredibly small particles that could pass through thousands of miles of solid matter. Today we recognize these as the properties of neutrino radiation. Tesla even claimed that this radiation traveled at faster than the speed of light. Maybe that's the reason he and Einstein never became friends. Well, this uh, TV uh, was done by the second German uh, TV. And uh, here you have the text again from the New York Times that he was pointing out uh, particles radiated from the uh, heavenly bodies uh, quicker than speed of light and uh, they have a, enormous penetrative uh, power so these properties only neutrinos have and this is why Nikola Tesla is called the father of free energies because we know that these particles are carrying energy. Uh, Pauli uh, teaches us uh, that at the de better decay this could only be explained by uh, the energy from the neutrino radiation. And as the neutrino radiation is transporting this energy and as the neutrino radiation uh, is coming mostly is are coming out of a black hole and a black hole you know is black because it uh, co covers all uh, radiation and all particles which are uh, at a speed less than the speed of light. Uh, this um, uh, means that uh, th these particles must have a speed which is uh, more than the speed of light. And this is a uh, speed of, of the group, not of, of the phase, because it's carrying e uh, energy. And we know that only the group of a wave is transporting energy. Uh, this really is a conflict uh, with the postulation of the theory of relativity. But it's, uh, well, we have to accept it if, if it happens. Here we have him with the lamp, um, and uh, this uh, film was uh, done <coughs> some years ago, very often shown in Germany, in French, in uh, Poland, in uh, Russia, and uh, here I have some parts of this film um, which are uh, produced in English. So I have I've put them in my presentation. I hope it will start. You have Space still... Energy can be sucked through the air. In order to understand what's going on, we have to know what kind of waves are being used. Electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, comparable to the waves that are created when you throw a pebble into a pond. But there are other kinds of waves, longitudinal or shock waves, like those created by this toy gun. It makes smoke rings that fly forward one after the other. Sound is a longitudinal wave, and that's the kind of wave that's being used here. Meyer calls them Tesla waves. He's followed up and developed Tesla's research. His model boat has nothing but an electric motor on board and an antenna, a Tesla antenna. Okay, this boat, last uh, time when I had been, it's now five years ago, uh, I have had the boat here in, in Salt Lake City it was, perhaps somebody will remember it when we have had it outside the building showing that it was moving in this pool without cable and without batteries. Okay, let's have a look uh, to the work of Nikola Tesla. He was, this, now he was using a car, a Pierce Arrow, uh, which he has changed the motor into an electric one and he was running this car without batteries. But uh, we don't know where the energy was coming from um, well, uh, I think 
it was not free energy from the from the sun it was from somewhere on the earth so uh, this would be could be the reason why this car at the end when it was published in a newspaper uh, it took only two weeks that he became a visit of somebody we don't know and they were taking away this converter so um, this uh, happens more often if energy is stolen but this always is the problem if you have a wireless transmission of energy so you have to consider how to modulate sig the signals how to perhaps use uh, phase jumps and so on that uh, a receiver is uh, falling out of resonance at a certain time and that uh, you uh, make a, a license or a, a agreement with those who are paying for the power otherwise you find nobody who was uh, producing uh, this, uh, wire, this power wirelessly this was why Piermont Morgan at his time stops the money for Nikola Tesla because he said I can't earn money with your system the Tesla roadster of today has nothing to do with Nikola Tesla, you see. It was a, it was a standard uh, battery uh, car, but uh, it shows us that what, what we have to, what, what, we, what we are needing. We need cars without batteries. I have not the time, sorry, to wait eight hours uh, to reload my battery if I want to go a longer distance here in America. It's absolutely uh, not uh, agreeable. Um, and uh, the batteries uh, as well are very uh, expensive and uh, we don't have uh, batteries which uh, have no cost and no weight and, and, and uh, have a, a perfect efficiency you see and we don't start uh, developing batteries from today we, we do it uh, since 100 years so uh, this uh, is um, uh, there, there's, I can see a solution for this problem, you see. Uh, the wireless system would be the only one. Well, uh, let's start with the Tesla um, developments. Uh, the first one was the multi-phase system uh, with an efficiency less than 100% because he has had, uh, and we still have today, these couple losses in the cables um, which are uh, heating the environment. And um, these three-phase system uh, we are using today uh, was uh, shown practically um, the first time um, in America from this uh, power plant at the Niagara Falls to uh, um, Chicago in the, for the World, uh, uh, World Fair. Uh, this uh, power line was working at 20,000 volt and um, Let's have a look at uh, some dates. Um, at 1882, Nikola Tesla invented these multi-phase currents. Multi-phase currents because he was not uh, uh, telling us whether uh, three or four or five or six, everything is possible. Even you need more than only one, one phase. With one phase, you can't move uh, a motor. Um, uh, or produce a, a rotating field uh, in the motor. So, uh, 1883, Tesla builds the first asynchronous motor, um, and uh, two years later, the, in, it in Italy, the Fer uh, Ferraris uh, was uh, establishing the theory. So, the theory was coming later. First was the invention, you see. Um, and uh, but the question always was what, what to do if you have an asynchronous motor three-phase motor and you have no uh, three-phase uh, currents available you see that means you need to, gen uh, to generate these fa three-phase systems and this was done by Haselwander uh, in 1887 the first uh, synchronous generator and um, in 1988 uh, Tesla first uh, was partially publishing his um, AC patents. Uh, in the same time, uh, the AEG, Allgemeine Elektrizitätsgesellschaft in Germany, uh, introduces the term Drehstrom. So this is well known in Germany. This uh, this term uh, it says uh, turn, a turning current. Well, this was established 
by the AG. They were using the patents of Tesla the first and were, were paying uh, um, for these patents the longest, um, uh, longer than, uh, than Westinghouse. 1891, uh, the first long distance AC transmission had been uh, shown pub and uh, pu uh, the public demonstration from Laufen am Neckar to Frankfurt am Main. It was done by the AEG, by Dopowolski, and um, this uh, was the cause why they have had a small fear in, in Frankfurt to show that this is possible over about 300 miles. Um, uh, the, in America, in, at the same time, they were constructing a bigger um, demonstration with more power uh, and a longer distance um, and uh, this took them more time till 1893 when there was the World Fair in, in uh, Chicago. Uh, in, honor, in honor to Nikola Tesla, you know this, these pictures. What does when AM and AM stand for? Amine. Well, Amine, Amine. Frankfurt, we have two Frankfurts in Germany. Uh, the one is am Main, at, in, at the Main, River Main. Um, okay, uh, but it's, it's the one which is in, in West Germany, which is... Yeah. So this is the three-phase system we are using in, in Europe, in the center of Europe. And, uh, well, we have the same, but other currents, uh, other, other voltages here in America. That means for this three-phase system, we need uh, three cables, one, two, three, and maybe a fourth one, which may be connected to the Earth. It is the neutral uh, uh, line. And um, uh, these systems are using three times 120 degree uh, shift, uh, and uh, this uh, sh um, gives us the, the following solution that uh, here you see the currents if they run out of the generator they run in, into the load uh, that means if, if I want to have this system supported uh, or used both generator and load have to be in resonance. Resonance means that we are using the same frequency on both sides which are uh, 50 hertz in in Europe and uh, 60 in America and we need to have the opposite phase angle that means if the, the currents are running out then at the same time they are going in on the other side uh, and uh, well in addition we have the situation that if you uh, add all these three currents at this point then the, uh, this will be zero so that you have uh, absolute uh, compensation, uh, compensating situ situation um, for these currents. Okay, this is the three-phase system and uh, this is the patent from, this stems from Nikola Tesla from 1880 and you see exactly these three-phase systems here on the generator and on the uh, motor side and you can, you can discuss this as a turning system where you have a movement at the generator side which is um, the turbine um, and uh, uh, the generator is, is changing this movement into electric movement, electrical fields, rotating fields and this is supported through the motor and then the motor is just doing the opposite, is uh, turning at the end in a mechanical way. You see, this is the idea behind. Today, uh, we would, uh, would have other decisions because uh, with electronics, we can, uh, power electronics, we can change every, every uh, size into another one, whatever we want, you see. Uh, at that time, it was impossible. They have had no electronics, so uh, they had to uh, establish this system. But Nikola Tesla said, well, with this, uh, with this three-phase system, um, we, need <coughs> we need three cables plus the earthing. We could have a four-phase a four system, that means four times 90 degree, which gives as well 360, is possible as well. Uh, 
um, and this system um, uh, has the uh, positive uh, idea behind that you are able to uh, really uh, um, reconnect or re uh, establish these L these line L4 from L2 it's only if you change the both ends of your coil you see at the uh, at the generator side and as well at the motor side again and the L3 by the L1 so at the end you need only two cables L1 and L2 and the earthing line and you see this at his time of Nikola Tesla uh, uh, he, everything was not established and uh, everything was open and he was thinking about these things and was publishing this principle in 1889 with two lines and this earthing line. So he, he says uh, we are able to improve it, we don't need only three, we, uh, we, we may work with only two cables and then the next was to use only one cable. So the, he, he was thinking about uh, the, the less cable, the cables, uh, well, had been very expensive at that time as well. It was copper, you see, copper was used. So if you are able to reduce this, uh, uh, the number of cables, um, but, well, at the end, uh, all the countries were using now, nowadays the same, the same uh, system. And uh, we are really, well, um, uh, fixed to this fi system. We are not free to, to do something else. Uh, the last four-phase system I have seen was in, in Paris. But it's now 30 years ago uh, that they were using a four-phase four system at the Perferic. Um, well, Nikola Tesla, um, was very proud. Here he is sitting in front of this uh, power plant at the Niagara Falls and here we have an inside look uh, to the generator which was used in, in this power plant. It was the first power plant, um, uh, water power plant which was constructed and uh, this is from this uh, Tesla uh, um, uh, demonstration or fair in, uh, of, of uh, the Swiss Swiss Tesla Society. Here you have a look at the Tesla uh, sign of the generator and you see uh, it was uh, at the Niagara Falls. Uh, Westinghouse Electric has manufactured this generator uh, up to plans of Nikola Tesla and here you see what is all patented. Patented you can read Tesla, 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 Tesla and there it's co continued. So he has really developed everything that was necessary to produce this, this system. Well, and when the situation was that this power plant was opened, uh, Nikola Tesla has to have the keynote speech, you see. Well, he was the famous guy who did everything. And this keynote speak, Tesla was talking in his speech, he was talking about a system which is much better than the one they have this, uh, well constructed. They were all the, had been proud and Tesla said well this is only the second best solution. I can tell you about a better solution. And they said now he gets old a bit or well. Uh, and he said he was talking about the one wire system which has an efficiency of about 100% and nobody could follow him. Well, the idea behind is shown on this left side. It's from his patent that he was using a generator, generated uh, power, uh, supplying these uh, flat coils uh, called Tesla coils, pancake coils they are, and the, la the line, one line to the other side, which is a receiver, and then we have these pancake coils again and connected uh, from, the, from the secondary coil to the to, to the low, to the um, resistance and whatever, motors and whatever you want to do, lamps. Well, uh, it is, I think it is not totally understood how this system is working because this line Tesla could show, and I have shown this as well, could be a very thin wire, 
very thin wire. I have shown it with less power. He was shown it with 10,000 watt. I showed it with 500 watt with a washing machine motor. And we were using a very thin, uh, it was in Austria in, in the University of Linz. I, show, I was using a very thin wire and this wire was not um, burned up, you see. It was t uh, carrying the whole energy for this 500 watt motor. But when we were using the same cable to uh, connect, connect it directly to the motor, it was blown up at once. So this was, uh, Tesla was showing at his time, was very, very famous for, for, his, for his experiments. And uh, uh, well, but why is this cable not producing losses. Why is it a remaining cold? That was the main question. And, and uh, he didn't uh, exactly explain to us what, what happens. Well, I, had, I have an idea. I can tell you about this idea. It has to do with these flat coils because if you use other coils or if you change the two connections, in, inner connection, outside connection, you, you have not these properties. Yeah, you can show this uh, with the, the experimental kit. It's very simple just to, to show. And it has to do, to do with, this, uh, with this flat coil. Uh, well, if you accelerate by induction the electrons in this coil, uh, they, they, they start moving, you see. But, but the space gets less and less they have because it's, it's winded up uh, to a center. So these, these electrons uh, start to turn around their axis uh, quicker and quicker and they, they get more and more flat. Normally they are ball, they get flat and at the end they, they are, uh, uh, get the property of a ring. And this ring means the electron as a ring has an open center uh, as it is like a vortex running around this center and if we have this wire in the center this is only the, the, the leading uh, wire and we have these vortices all around but what we do if we change the electrons into these into, into these ring vortices then we have to uh, turn them back again to electrons that we at the end are able to use them so this system is absolutely uh, um, identical, the identical coils for the transmitter are as well used for the receiver and you see uh, this could be an answer what he was doing. But, but these vortices uh, are not explained by um, Maxwell theory and this was why uh, nobody was believing in what Tesla says. And you have to reproduce it, you have to show it to everybody. This is the only possibility we have. Well, if I give this presentation to companies, power companies and so on, it is always good to figure out that they are still using the Tesla technology. They don't know, you see, but they are using. They have tried it only and have found out that at a quad bundle, what, what they are using at the highest power uh, level or voltage level, which is uh, 380 kilovolt. In peak, it is 511 kilovolt. Um, then uh, they are using not one cable, but four cables. Um, and um, uh, this gives a lot of opportunities and uh, positive uh, results, uh, like the reduction of the edging field strength, radio interference, corona discharges, transmission losses, because they are transporting part of the power inside these, uh, these four lines as a Tesla transmission. It is, uh, it is transmitted in the field and not, not in the wire, you understand. This is very important. So um, uh, if you look at the efficiency, these power lines uh, are using about 5% uh, in the field and 95% in the cable. The, the currents are floating. And I tell them, well, you have to try just the opposite, 95% in the, 
in the space and 5% in the cable, then, then you will be better. And they understand this, but they say, wow, how to do this? And I say, Tesla is telling you how to do it. Well, let's go to the project, the Tesla Tech, uh, the, no, the Desert Tech project, it's called. Um, this was when the discussion uh, comes up uh, to, to stop these uh, atomic power plants and uh, then they were painting pictures in uh, Germany, in, in, in Switzerland, in, Aust in uh, France as well and all the neighbors. You see, uh, they said, well, uh, we have a bit of wind here but not enough. We have uh, some other power plants. We could use uh, water. Well, forget it. Um, uh, best would be the thermal, thermal energy, but it's a long way to go. And uh, here in the, in the desert, in the Sahara, uh, in North Africa, well, there is really enough energy. Here you see, for the whole world, it would be this space, you see. For, for Europe, it was this space, not bigger, to support whole Europe with energy, with solar thermal uh, power plants. And in addition, we have wind and so on. Um, well, this was the idea, but then Fukushima happens and then they, they were getting out from the table these uh, pictures and so on and these calculations and they found out that absolute, uh, it, is, it is absolutely uh, not usable and it is not, uh, may not be realized because we have a lot of problems not considered with this, with this system. Um, uh, well, I don't want to discuss all the problems we still have now because uh, they are producing windmills and windmills and you know that, that we, we get the problems if you have a lot of windmills. Uh, what, what to do if there is no wind, you see, then we, we need to have other power plants who stand still and have costs and have to be produced, have to be served. Well, the uh, amount of costs we have and who is paying for it. Yeah. And, uh, but we need them, uh, otherwise the lamps will go out if there is no wind and, uh, and so on. All these problems to store, the sto if you store energy, a lot of costs uh, are as a consequence because uh, you, you need to, to have the same power a second and a third time to store it and to change it back again and Okay, uh, if we look at the solution, the solution could be that we have a um, so solution for, for, especially for Germany here in the center of Europe, would be that we have two power plants. One may be in the Emirates, uh, big power plants, and one in Morocco. Uh, this uh, would give us, uh, over long distance, would give us the chance that we have energy in the morning when it's still dark in, in, in Germany, we get the energy from Emirates and in the evening we get it from Morocco. So this could be a, a solution, but um, this uh, 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 needs a lot, very, very long cables. Uh, high voltage DC transmission, this is what is now um, dis uh, discussed. Uh, we have some advantages for these systems, uh, decoupling, maybe used as submarine cables, uh, decoupling from uh, uh, generator to, to the motor or to the uh, load. No phase shift. Phase shift means if, if uh, you have uh, cables, the, uh, AC cables next to, to each and up to, to, to the other, uh, then uh, it's, it's a capacitance and this is turning the phase shift. And if you have phase shifts, especially for submarine cables where the p lines are very uh, close to, uh, to the other, and there you have a high, a high capacitance and uh, a lot of sh uh, phase shift. And this phase shift means if you have 180 degree phase shift, then a generator turns into a motor. You are, lost, you are losing all the energy. Nothing uh, remains at the, at the end, you see. And uh, you are only heating uh, the cables. Uh, well, uh, th this is why uh, submarine cables uh, are not used for three-phase systems, but for DC systems we have no phase shift. It could be used, um, 
we have no current displacement, no corona. Okay, disadvantages are that we are just heating the environment by these current heat. Uh, we have losses in the rectifier and, and uh, inverter because we have to rectify everything and then to invert it into uh, 60 hertz again. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, leading company producing the cables for this, uh, which are a special coaxial cable for, for um, uh, submarine uh, use, is uh, ABB in, in uh, Switzerland, where I was giving this presentation as well. Here you see um, uh, uh, red, the red lines are the ones which are still in use, the green ones which are uh, just uh, constructed, uh, DC cables, and the uh, blue ones which are planned. Uh, there are a lot of uh, um, physicists and a lot of uh, politics uh, th are thinking this should be the solution, but now I calculate this. I calculate about 5,000 5, kilometer submarine ca cable because you see it, it is not enough if, you, if, you, if your cable ends maybe in Portugal and uh, has to find the way to Germany because nowadays our network is just the opposite. In Germany the big power plants are and the cables end in Portugal <laughs> and they're very thin in Portugal, very, very low voltage so you can't uh, turn it around and uh, uh, have the whole power for, for Europe uh, coming from uh, Portugal. You have to renew and to change all the cables, all the high voltage cables and nobody uh, today wants uh, these uh, high voltage cables uh, over the roof of his house, you see. And this uh, is nearly impossible to, they, they have to have very long ways all around the towns and, and the houses uh, to, to find, uh, uh, and this means you have even more, more losses. So, uh, what, what the solution would be that we uh, using our cable uh, maybe through um, uh, the North Sea, uh, Holland, uh, in Amsterdam, the River Rhine, uh, up to the atomic plants where they are in Switzerland or um, in Germany. And there to get the cable out, to switch off the power plant and to switch on the, this energy coming from this. And okay, from, from the desert. But I compare, if we would use the three-phase system for this distance with a lot of costs because always you have to shift back, you know, the phase, uh, then we would have uh, about 75% losses. So more heating than what we used at the end. If we were, would use uh, and these, these uh, facts are the most effective systems we, which are available to, today, you see, which I have figured out. The high voltage system at uh, two times uh, 800 kilovolt, which has the best efficiency today, uh, they have only 4% per 1,000 kilometers. Well, 20% losses, if uh, minimum. Uh, if we would use the Tesla system with one wire, uh, only one time uh, 600 kilovolt, we would have 3% losses. So this is a very clear answer where we have to go. Um, well, the companies, just like ABB, they say if our customers, which are the uh, distributor of the, of, of the power, if they order it, this Tesla technology from us, then we are developing everything we are um, constructing. This is the answer I have, but as long as they don't get any order, they don't do it, you see. Ah, okay. They are living from the orders that it is paid. Well, what it would be the energy in the future I say it has to be Tesla tech and um, 
Well, let's speak about the energy sources. Energy, electrical energy may be won by geothermal energy from Iceland, which is very clean, just under the surface. Uh, wind energy, which is still in action. Solar power in Africa, I talked about. Oil sludge in Canada, they have 27 billion tons in the sand and now they start cleaning it and they are totally uh, damaging uh, the surface of the earth and it is a catastrophe what they are doing. The best solution would be to burn this sand with the oil where it is, you see, to clean it up and to send the energy by Tesla coils to Europe, to America, where it is needed uh, and to, to clean up. But this is not, not by, by uh, the, um, the human beings done, this catastrophe is a natural, natural catastrophe it is, you see. The nature sometimes is damaging our earth as well. But, but we need to clean it, to clean it up. And uh, this um, uh, is our task. Uh, methane gas from Siberia. This is the next problem. Uh, if we get global warming, whatever the cause will be, um, maybe only the sun is getting hotter, is getting more active. This could, may, may happen. It happens more often in, in uh, uh, the uh, lifetime of the Earth. Uh, and it has nothing to do with the CO2. As you see, CO2 ever, any, anyway is, uh, uh, has a higher weight than, than the air, so it's, it's, it's uh, downstairs here. Okay, um, methane gas from Siberia, uh, it will get out if all this um, permafrost uh, will, will melt. And then we have this gas in our atmosphere, a catas next catastrophe it is. Uh, the best is that we are using it before it comes out, you see. So let's, let's do it. You know how to do it. Okay, with the submarine cables. Anyway, uh, th this means we have to change our thinking and some energies uh, or technologies we have to forget in future. We, uh, yeah, say goodbye. No more energy from nuclear power. Well, the, uh, these uh, uh, sticks are using neutrino radiation, uh, that means neutrino power, even if they are burned out for the next thousand years, you see. Uh, it does, uh, it's not, not true that the uh, atomic plants are using no energy. And it's, it's, it's evil, it's, it's, it's the energy of the nature, of, of our plants and of ourselves what they are using. The biomass, it's the next catastrophe. I say never use uh, such uh, well, uh, a biomass for, for energy which is con, um, contaminating the soil. The food is getting more and more expensive, you know. And at the end, we are, we are burning living cells. You see, we, we are living in a circle. We are not living for, for our lifetime. We are in a circle. A circle means that, that we are born, we are produced by other living systems in our biosphere. And you, you can't burn uh, uh, the nature. This is absolutely not acceptable. And it has nothing to do with renewable uh, energy. Uh, well, I supply energy and, and, and nothing is renewed, you see, you see, if it's burned. Do you renew it when, when you drive your car? Huh? No, never know. Well, if you give, if you give money to, to uh, the energy, you see, if, if you are a company, and uh, you want to live from the money you get. But you have customers who you have to give money that they are using your energy. How long can you do this? 
till you are bankrupt. Well, you see it in Europe, and here, well, ah, I don't, let's don't talk about money. Mm. <laughs> Burning f f uh, fossil or renewable, as it's called, energy sources, no, no energy from it. So this is my, what my speech. Uh, such as coal, because coal, we know coal uh, stems from, from old, old trees, but not oil, not natural gas, not our fuel. Uh, because this, um, hmm? Hmm? no energy from, wait a minute, let's try it again. Um, John, <laughs> this is his computer, not mine. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm started beginning. Um, hmm. Yeah. Go down. Uh, oh no, 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 I'm beginning. Here, 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 here. Yeah, here. Here. This one. Next. That one? Yeah. yeah, next. I tried. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Till this, till this picture comes. Here. Yeah, next. Thank okay. you. Right. Now I try. Okay, okay it's not working. Video? Please use the next. Okay. Oops, no. could be the solution for the future uh, new te technologies we need anyway uh, and um, Victor Schauberger was showing such a solution and uh, mm, mm, you have to do it please go 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 down oh, God. Oh. Mm. I give up yeah. Next, please. The whole piece, the whole picture. Mine is not working here. Well, uh, CO2 from, uh, from water, which is uh, turned by vortex. Well, uh, if, you, if you produce a vortex of water, and uh, which is accelerating more and more. At the end, you know that you get clouds, so the, the, uh, the speed will be very, very high. Minus not hmm? uh, And uh, by these high speeds uh, and these forces, uh, the com it may be uh, separated into the components, that means C and O, and the water as well, water molecules to O and uh, hydrogen. So, um, at the end, they are forming again, but the, for what they are forming are change and benzene rings, and this we call... Okay, 
and this the result is a liquid flammable liquid well uh, I'm advisor with, uh, at this company and uh, I show you a short film um, how to produce uh, fuel from water and CO2 CO2 is very cheap because you get money if you buy it you see <laughs> nowadays <laughs> okay no it's not working please Start the film. The next, please. Yep. Well, here is here is it. Uh, this is a Schauberger machine with water inside, and it's pumped again up about three hours. We we have we left this machine work, and then we could burn it. You see, the result with a, s a standard uh, well, heater and uh, you see a lot of uh, politics were there po from politics and, and uh, well as well from uh, the Emirates you see here he is uh, from uh, Abu Dhabi and uh, the other one is from Dubai uh, from the government well, they are interested in it because you know that if they run out of oil, they don't have any more. Uh, so uh, they look what to do and uh, they are filling it in this uh, Mercedes uh, diesel car and it's an old one. Uh, I don't try it with a new one. Yeah, I think, but with the old one, they, they use everything. You see, here they're filling that this, uh, tanking. Yeah. And um, they're doing it themselves uh, because they only believe in what they do, you see. And then they start and well, they were, well, they were using the car, so. Yeah. It was working, you see. Uh, you can you can go with with water and uh, CO2, which is very cheap anyway. Uh, you mix it up and then you you drive your car. Okay. Uh, well, what are the consequences? Uh, help me, please. Hmm. No. Next. What are the consequences? The consequences are that this, if we are able to produce. Um, oil and uh, fuel artificially I would say the earth is able to do the same um, mm, mm. Mm. so natural gas and oil are not <laughs> show the whole the whole uh, please uh, uh, everything at once because I yeah. Okay, natural gas and oil are not fuels from fossil origin. This is very important. Well, Russians have had the uh, experiences that uh, they, were, uh, they had a, a field which ran out of oil and uh, after half a year it was filled up again. And, um, uh, and the quality was different. So it was coming from inside, you see. I, I'm sure that no, no uh, trees had been uh, using this in the meantime. They are formed in the liquid mantle of the earth. I think it is so because everything is uh, move, moving around, turning around in this, in this mantle. It's liquid. Uh, the rest of us are filling up again from the inside of the earth. Oil reserves are not finally. This is only because they want to make money, you see that they tell us it's, it's uh, only uh, finally and it's, uh, that, that it's getting less and less and then they get up with the money. Well, it is not. I think a lot of, a lot of scientists, a lot of politics know this. Problems caused by CO2 production, well, forget it. Uh, problems are, can arise by oxygen consumption, please, please. Gas is lighter than oil, and oil is lighter than water. Well, this gives us the uh, problem or the, the answer 
Well, uh, it's okay, and stay away from these two buttons, just these two. Yeah, Very yeah good. I always do use this one. Batteries are better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Batteries are better. Batteries. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some energy. Yeah. So we, we know some energy. I know, I know. We need, we need wireless transmission of energy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know this. All these, all these batteries, you see, if you, uh, they are not good for, for the environment because uh, um, they li live uh, very short. Uh, 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 if you want to use them, they are empty and, and they are trash and it's, it's a poison. It's really, uh, we, we need new uh, ideas. Uh, wireless uh, energy would be a solution for, for these anyway. Uh, well, uh, where, where do we have to look for oil? This is a very int uh, interesting question, you see, uh, because nowadays they're only digging, 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 well, tri uh, trial and error. Uh, well, sometimes they find something. Uh, but you can do it scientifically. And this is the, the map of the Earth from, uh, from here, from the NASA, and uh, showing by the red lines uh, where the uh, where the earth is expanding where we it's spreading off uh, here it is as well uh, explained how much it is I can't read it here but it is, I know that it is about uh, 15 centimeter per year and uh, Atlantic it is about four centimeter per year it's uh, less uh, this is the average over the last, uh, I don't know, 10 years. And here at, at the uh, Indian, we have about five centimeters per year. So we have all, all, all around here, we have these red lines where the uh, crust of the earth is separated, which is caused by the uh, uh, expanding earth. Well, on the other side, here we have a, a, blue, a blue line, which is uh, showing the subduction, but if you look at, at the centimeters, well, zero. Uh, ne never observed. It's only because there are some uh, scientists who cannot believe that the Earth is expanding. But we have, we have measured it from space, and now we are sure that it is uh, in, in the average uh, mo uh, 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 growing about uh, 19 centimeters per year. Okay, uh, where to look for oil? This was the question. No. Ah, yeah. Uh, Hildenberg was writing a, a book about this uh, problem from 1933, and he was uh, showing that if the radius is get, getting bigger, then as a consequence, these um, um, well, uh, shelf uh, region or this um, crust of the earth uh, is under pressure and under uh, here under f uh, forces uh, will occur here as well. So the consequences that mountains uh, will increase, the formation of mountains uh, with the increasing radius, uh, cracks, falls, folds, and so on are a consequence of this effect. And here, we have to dig for oil. <laughs> you understand? It's always good to, to know more about only uh, this view. Um, well, this is the situation. We have continental uh, uh, crust which of the Earth. Um, which is at low density, including uh, these deposits with, with oil, filled up with oil, with water, or somet sometimes mixed up. Um, and here we, we have these, uh, well, these structures. Uh, it, it is at low density, but on the other side, we have a very new um, uh, crust, uh, which is the o oceanic uh, crust, uh, at high density and uh, uh, only five to seven kilometers, four miles maybe thick. This is not very much. You see, the, uh, under the ocean, we have a very thin, very thin uh, crust, um, and uh, you have to pay attention. If you are, if you are drilling through this uh, crust, then 
you, uh, you will find a lot of gas and oil anyway because you see this is a, a bottle here uh, or a pool from, f from inside which, which is uh, 50 kilometers yeah uh, so this is much much bigger and as, as I told you that we have different density uh, the gas and uh, will be on top and uh, the petroleum and the, uh, the oil will be uh, uh, under it and then we have the water and so we learned by the catastrophe in, um, in the Gulf in the here uh, uh, not far from here <laughs> in the Gulf when they were digging in such a structure where, where it was not too deep, uh, but it was 1,000, I think, 1,500 um, meters, uh, and then they uh, found oil. But they were they, these layers; they, they were killing. They were drilling in this direction. So, if it, if the, the hole is open, you can't uh, stop it because it's under such pressure. No trees are involved. You see. Okay. So, let's talk about the third idea of Nikola Tesla, which is the magnifying transmitter, or let me say the wireless system. And he was proclaiming, proclaiming that he has an efficiency which could be even more than 100%. And uh, this was why Tesla uh, was using the one wire system only in his laboratory, the wireless system, this was what he really wants. And um, in his patent, you see that he was using electrodes as antennas on both sides, so he needs no cable in between. He was using these scalar waves. I, I think about it is an electric scalar wave. Uh, it is from electrode to electrode. You can uh, explain it as a capacitance, uh, and uh, the coils are the inductance and uh, it's connected by the earth, earthing of the system. So this is a closed loop. We call it in electrical engineering a closed loop. And you, uh, if you bring them into resonance, these two things, um, and it's just working. I showed this with the boat and with other um, things. Here you see uh, his laboratory at um, Colorado Springs. I'll show you a few pictures. I think you are familiar with them. I don't have to explain too much. Um, uh, he explained it. This is from uh, a paper called Famous Scientific Illusions. Uh, he explained his system uh, in this way. He said, if you compare the Earth with a rubber a ball, a ball of, uh, made of rubber, and you have a pump at one point, and you are pumping, you see, this ball. And you stick at a certain point with a needle or so in this rubber ball, then it was the, the pressure will come out, in, out, in. You, you have the whole, in, uh, um, whole energy at every point uh, on this ball available. This is wireless transmission of energy. And he said, well, this we do electrically. We are using this, uh, this uh, um, transmitter with an electrode on top. Well, it could be explained by a dipole with two electrodes, one on top and the other electrode, well, it's a bit bigger. It's, it's, it's the whole Earth, you see. This is why he is always earthing his system. Okay, uh, uh, and the, he says if uh, you are ex uh, exciting this system, then it will do just the same. It will uh, produce um, AC, AC voltage and you are able to drive uh, your, your boats and your airplanes with this. And, or here he has the lamp in his hand so you ha can use it for illumination. This is his uh, experiment with his, uh, you know, uh, on Long Island with the, with the Wardenclyff Tower and a uh, uh, quick look um, aside from, uh, from the plans, from his uh, technical um, uh, writings um, or inside his laboratory you could uh, see a lot of coils and other devices 
he was using for his system. But uh, at the end, uh, he ran out of money because uh, Piermont Morgan was uh, stops uh, uh, the funds, uh, as uh, he said. Well, it's not only for radio use; it is as well could be as well used for driving boats, supplying them with energy. And he said, "If I don't get money, then I stop it." He wanted to use them to transmit radio signals around the world, but also to transmit power without cables. In 1898, Tesla demonstrated to the U.S. Navy in Madison Square Gardens how you could steer a boat remotely by radio waves. But he also wanted to power the boat remotely. Yeah, this is again the, the boat. Um, This is from the original patent. I point out three points which are tremendous important. One is this 11.8 hertz, which is the earth resonance. He is pointing out here. He says non less than uh, one twelfth, probably this value which he is calculating. The second is that he says uh, that his signal which is he calculating by comparing with the um, um, resonance of the Earth um, given by the Schumann resonance. He says, my system uh, is using 1.47 uh, times the speed of light. Uh, he gives this value 471,000 kilometers per second. Here you have it kilometers per second. And the third one says uh, it is a stationary wave, that means a long tail wave, the presence of stationary waves, here you have it. Uh, and he is explaining that these are long tail waves. So uh, this, this is from his patent, so this is Tesla writing originally. And uh, these are the things we have to prove. Uh, Tesla has found out these these uh, results from this laboratory in Colorado Springs. And uh, well, I think I explained it the last time. I can do it a bit quicker that he was transmitting the energy over a long distance more than the near field of the antenna with a speed more than speed of light with an over unity effect. So he was receiving more than he was uh, transmitting. He, he could uh, see uh, by his ampere meter uh, when he was going into a resonance. So then the, it was reduced, the amperes, the currents are reduced. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it is a scalar wave with knots and so on. Biological effectiveness, Tesla had been uh, pointed it out um, that this exists. Well, uh, this is his calculation and I proved this calculation that he was uh, comparing the Tesla wave with the Hertzian wave and these relation of the frequencies give the speed of light if the wavelength is constant. You, well, we couldn't prove this. We had to um, do our own experiment. This is our, max, our experimental kit, oops, which uh, shows just the same um, um, properties. I showed this experimental kit uh, what was it? It was uh, two days before in our show, in the showroom of the NPA. Some of, the, of, you, uh, of you perhaps have seen this. I figured out where is the resonance for the Tesla wave. It was about 7.1 megahertz. The Hertzian wave about 4.5 or 4.6 megahertz. Um, and my calculation gives us such uh, uh, a result. Uh, well, Tesla could be reproduced. Uh, so the scientific value of this reproduction uh, we have done is that we get an answer whether Tesla was mistaken. Now we know that it is not true. He was absolutely correct uh, his, in his writings. The properties of scalar wave can be studied. This is very important uh, for, well, companies. More, more companies are now buying my, my system because they uh, don't want to be the last one. If one is starting using this new um, technology, you see the, the uh, 
everything will change very quick and they are all running, running to be, to be not at the end of the new technology. And this is why they are now buying all my elect, uh, uh, experiments to, to figure out what properties these Keller waves are. Yeah. Uh, well, reproducibility finally is given. Well, this is very important for the universities. Everything has to be reduced whenever we want, wherever we want. And this is possible. Uh, now, in the near field can be explained uh, this is especially for high fre frequency uh, specialists and the noise of antenna as well may be ex uh, explained by these, by these uh, experiments. Well, in America, when I had been uh, here the first time showing this experiment, it was in 2003, um, it was ready done, but uh, the National Science Foundation said, oh, this is interesting, oh, then we have to do, we want it ourselves. Uh, but they, gave, uh, they give, gave the money not to me, you see, I'm German, well, uh, they gave it to the MIT. Hmm. Yeah, uh -oh. well, uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, oh, and the MIT, they said, oh, we realized Tesla's dream, this is from their homepage, you see, the, the guys, they said, it's, uh, this is the future. Here they say, wireless energy could power consumer, they have perfect, perfect, uh, um, management they have and so on and uh, talking and everything. Well, this is what they realized has nothing to do with Tesla, sorry to say. It was using uh, RFID system only upsized a bit with magnetic fields and what they want is that the magnetic field lines are collecting again at the load uh, but no magnetic field lines do this. They all go the quickest way, you see. So you have no efficiency. Nothing is re uh, reached here. Only if you uh, uh, support the magnetic fields that they can go back by the metal lamp or in the table which has a metal framework, you see, then uh, you see here the lamps and the framework. Uh, this helps. Okay, then you have efficiency of about maybe 30%. Forget it. This t Tesla would laugh if we would see, see this, you see. It's uh, absolutely nonsense. I invited these guys to, to come to Germany to, to, to sh show what they have produced and I wanted to compare it because uh, at the time I had been on a fair, a very famous fair in Germany, in Mannheim, and I was at the same time showing how to transmit energy of 400 watts over 300 meters at an efficiency of nearly 100 percent, which is up to Tesla, you see. And if you compare this, then you know why this is only nonsense. Well, they haven't understood what, what Tesla did. This is the problem, you see. And um, so I can't, I can't help them. Well, uh, uh, Intel Corporation, they wanted to, they wanted to buy this system but then they have found out that this is impossible to use it and then they bought my experimental kit, you see. <laughs> so this is, if you are using the RFID technology, you have fields from your transmitter. Uh, in his tag, he will uh, uh, receive this energy and it's sending back the, uh, the next feed lines, which are microwave signals to send back, yes, I'm the one or, the, or not the one. Uh, maybe he's the one, he is using scalar waves, so there are no, uh, no spreading fields, that means you have no biological effectiveness. Uh, if you use this system in modern cars, you know, keyless go systems and so on, how, how they are called, uh, then you have these problems. This situation you have for the driver, oh, interesting. This could be the solution. We have, we have to learn from this. Okay, this is a bit more in, in physics. Uh, I don't have the time, John says. Well, I do it quick. This is an ex uh, electromagnetic wave. Uh, we know the properties with the speed of light, uh, but we never have uh, efficiency of 100%. That means we always have part of these, of these antennas transmitted as uh, scalar waves, electric or magnetic scalar waves 
both are possible. The electric one, Tesla was using, the magnetic one, the bio biology is using. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this is well known, this is called radiation, when uh, we are radiating electric or magnetic fields from a source, uh, this is a bounded oscillation, that means the speed is infinite, uh, I can't define or derive any speed because there are no knots and so on, um, this is well known, but 100% efficiency never exists, you always have in combination to this one, the electric scalar wave or the magnetic radiation, the magnetic scalar wave. You, you know that at, at, te at Tesla's time, he was discussing this and he said, well, uh, I have a wave. And then the scientists came and said, no, you have radiation, you have this. Because this part is ignored in all textbooks, is not explained by the Maxwell theory and this is why you have to extend the Maxwell theory, what I have done. And only if you do this, then you are able to, to explain what is in, in between. And here you see the consequences with the losses. If we have losses in this uh, case of a capacitance, then we speak about dielectric losses, which are condenser losses or condenser noise. And uh, on the other hand, if we have an antenna and they have losses, antenna losses, this is as well noise and if these, I call them vortices because we have here uh, not a wave but a vortex, if these vortices decay, they are producing heat. Thank you for your attention. we had the time to, uh, to do an extensive Q&A, we don't. Um, actually, we're, we've, run, we've run up against our time. We actually let uh, uh, Constantine finish his, uh, uh, his presentation uh, at the expense of the Q&A time. However, Constantine will be outside in the hallway in a little bit. Uh, we're, uh, we're about 25, 30 minutes behind right now. We got to start, you well, we got started 14 we started. minutes late. Yeah. But we got through his complete presentation.